Okay, so this happened when I was around nine years old, and it's something I will never forget. It gives me goosebumps to this day. I live in a terraced house, and my neighbors and I each have our own little patio. There's a small road about ten meters from my yard where people do their Sunday walks and so on. Only a small fence separates my small yard and patio from that road. I live in a pretty crowded area with several of these terraced houses spread around in my neighborhood. So seeing people walking on the road is pretty normal for me. Seeing random people standing on my patio is not. When I was nine, I usually got home from school about an hour before my mom got home from work. I live maybe 50 meters away from school, so my mom figured I was mature enough to be home alone for around an hour before she got home. This one day I got back home from school, I did the usual thing, which was to make sure I locked the front door and double check that the back door leading to the patio was also locked. I was nine, so being alone was a little scary, even though it was in the middle of the day and only for an hour. I then rushed to my room upstairs to play as much PlayStation as possible before my mom came home and made me do homework. While playing, I heard this noise coming from outside my window. My room was located on the floor over the patio with a view to the road I told you about before. It was kind of like the sound of a cat, but my cat had been missing for over three months. Hope sparked and I thought, oh my god, did he finally come back? I ran downstairs to check if it was my cat, but the sight that met me gives me goosebumps just writing this. There was a guy standing on my patio. A tall guy with black hair covering half of his eyes, making him look like a male version of a ring woman or something. I could hear him making high-pitched sounds, almost like a cat meowing. A brown liquid was running down from his mouth, and I could see him spitting out my dad's stomped cigarettes. He was actually eating from the ashtray. I was frozen observing this, but I eventually snapped out of it and screamed so loud that the man must have heard it. He didn't react. He kept on eating from the ashtray. I ran upstairs to my room, locked the door, and called my mom, who then called the cops. I've never been more terrified in my life, laying in bed under my sheets shivering with fear as I hear these creepy, high-pitched noises from the guy eating cigarette stomps from the ashtray on my patio. I kind of blacked out for a moment, because the next thing I remember is the police arriving on the road by my yard. I hear them talking to the guy, saying stuff like, What are you doing? Get over here, or we will come and arrest you, and so on. He didn't respond, but the high-pitched sounds were more frequent and became more loud. I decided to look through the window, feeling safe now that the cops were there. I could see two police officers standing by my fence, one man and one woman. I did not see the creepy man, however, because he was standing directly one story under me and my field of view was short. The police jumped the fence, and I remember hearing the creepy guy screaming louder than anything I've ever heard before. He charged the female police officer with full force, and he fucking knocked her out cold. The male officer then immediately tased the guy, leaving him shaking on the ground, screaming still. The policeman struggled to keep him on the ground while putting handcuffs on him, but eventually made it. After a while, he managed to wake up the female officer, who seemed to be badly hurt. He called for backup and an ambulance, and then he sees me standing in the window above. The expression on my face must have been something else, because he just looked at me and said, I sure as hell hope you didn't see that. I started to cry. By this time, neighbors started to arrive, wondering what the hell was going on. One of my neighbors, an elderly woman, made me come down. She took care of me until my mom came back home. The police took the creepy guy with them in the car and left, but before they left, they promised to come back and talk to us about what had happened. This is where the story takes an unexpected turn. The male police officer came back later that night and sat down with me and my mom to talk. He explained that the guy in the patio was actually diagnosed with severe autism. He had escaped a facility where mentally challenged people lived, located about five kilometers from where I live. He explained that the guy had actually been living in the house five years ago, but he had been forced to move when his mom, his only caretaker, died. Poor guy probably thought he would find his mom in my house. He missed the routines and he missed living there with his mom. The police had to move him from the house about five years ago because he was extremely strong. From what I heard, he had extreme tensions in the body because of his autism, making his muscles grow much stronger than the average person. This was the reason he reacted the way he did when the police came this day. Still frightened, I told the police officer that he needed to make sure this would never happen again.
He promised it wouldn't. After a few sleepless nights, my life got back to normal. The years went by and the guy didn't come back. Until one year ago. At this time, my mom and dad had moved out. I bought the house from them, and I'm still living there today. I was enjoying my morning coffee on the patio when I see this random guy stopping on the road by my fence. He just stands there, looking at me. I look at him and give him a nod. And then I hear the high-pitched noises. Holy shit, it's him. His hair had turned gray, but the high-pitched sounds made me realize. My heart started racing, and I instantly remembered the reason why he was back. I realized that he must have managed to escape again, but I kept my cool a bit longer than when I was nine. I started to realize how sorry I felt for the guy. Sixteen years later, he was back to look for his mom. I decided to carefully ask him if he wanted to come down to the patio. He instantly jumped the fence. I started to think he would knock me out like he did with the police officer. He didn't. He smiled, he looked at me, and smiled. I offered him to sit down. He didn't respond. I offered him to come inside. He started laughing. We went inside. His face lit up. Pure joy. He was home. It reminded him of the life he had with his mom. It almost made me tear up. All of a sudden, he sat down on my couch, turned on my TV, and switched directly to the cartoons. I observed him for a while. He was just completely focused on the cartoons. I just wanted him to enjoy the moment, so I didn't say anything to him. I realized I had to call the facility to let them know. But the caretakers arrived ten minutes later. After a lot of convincing, he got back up, crying, and then went back to the facility. I called the facility two days later. We made a deal. His name is Tom, and I now consider Tom my friend. Every Sunday from the day he returned, Tom and his caretakers visit me to watch cartoons. They say it's the highlight of his week. It makes my heart warm. Now, for several years, my thoughts were, let's not meet Guy on patio eating from the ashtray. Now my thoughts are, let's meet every Sunday to watch cartoons. My dear friend Tom.